Hi everybody, it's just me LTM. I'm giving you an update on my kombucha. I'm hoping that this is now ready to bottle. You'll remember that I grew this scoby from a purchased kombucha. I went to the shop, bought a bottle of kombucha, poured it into a bottle and let it sit for about three weeks and I grew my own scoby. So here in this jar, we have the sugar and tea mixture to which I added the scoby that I had grown myself with the hopes that this will make kombucha. And there's really no reason why that shouldn't be the case. It should have grown. It should have made kombucha for me. So we're gonna open it up, have a look. If you've been following on, you'll remember that the scoby that I grew was in a more square shaped jar. So the scoby was square shaped because the scoby will grow to fit the surface area of the container that you have your kombucha in. And this jar is roundish. It's not quite round because the, the sides are actually squared off. Uh, but I'm hoping when I take the lid off this that we will see that the scoby has grown to cover the whole surface area and then I'm going to have a taste and see if this is ready to be bottled. So here we go, we're going to take the lid off and see what we find. So that's just a paper towel that's held on with a lacquer band and wow, Whew, look at that. This is looking really good. I am so pleased with this. So the scoby has grown to fill the whole surface which is what it should have done. So that's a really good sign. Uh, it's quite a few bubbles there. So I'm guessing there's a fair bit of um, carbon dioxide being created in there. So the bubbles, because kombucha is an effervescent drink. It does have bubbles in it. So I'm guessing those bubbles are a good sign. And I'm really liking how that looks so now I'm going to grab a spoon and have a taste so now I'm going to have a taste of the kombucha and see whether it's at a stage that I want to bottle it I'm thinking it probably is because I don't like my kombucha overly acidic mmm that's quite good it's probably a little bit more acidic than I would particularly like, but it's certainly got very little sugar left in it, which you can tell because it doesn't taste very sweet anymore. And really you don't wanna to have too much sugar in your kombucha. We all know that sugar is not particularly good for your body. And the sugar is in the kombucha as food for the yeast and the bacteria, which is what the the mat on the top, the mushroom, the scoby. It's a symbiotic community of bacteria and yeast and they need the sugar and the tannin in the tea to live. That's their food pretty much. So I have a bottle that I have um, previously sterilized. I really like these swing top bottles. They're uh, really useful for this kind of product because you can put the lid on and seal them and they fit really nicely in the fridge too. So I'm going to decant the kombucha, most of it, not all of it, because I need to leave some to grow my, or to make my next batch of kombucha with. I'm going to pour most of it into this bottle and I'm going to add some blueberries for flavor. And then I will sit this on the bench for probably another two days and then I will put it in the fridge. So putting it in the fridge slows down the fermentation process. So that's the reason for leaving this on the bench for another couple of days after I have uh, decanted the kombucha into it and added the berries because I still want it to ferment a little bit more, but with the berries in it this time. So two days on the counter and then I'll pop it into the fridge and then when it's cold, I can drink it. So I'm going to take the scoby out of here first. And wow, it has thickened up substantially from when I first grew it. Just bring it a bit closer to the camera to see if you can see how much thicker that has grown. 
So it has grown. You can kind of still see the square, whoops, see the square shape on the back. See the ridges from where the square jar is that it was in before. And therefore this is the new growth. And that has grown substantially. I'm absolutely wrapped with that. That's fantastic. So now I'm going to pour this kombucha into this bottle. I know the bottle doesn't hold as much as the jar, so... Um, and it's fairly important to leave some headroom because this is going to ferment a little bit more and I want to add some berries in there too. So don't fill it right up to the top, but that's not a really good idea. The pressure buildup will quite possibly explode your bottle if you don't give it enough room to uh, contain the gas that's going to be created during the fermentation process. This is how much kombucha I have left behind to start my next lot of kombucha with. So that'll be a matter of some tea, which I um, made a pot of tea yesterday. So that is nice and cooled down. So I will add the liquid in the kombucha jar to the tea and strain it into another container. I'm not gonna use this container again because this now won't fit in this jar and as my scoby is getting bigger, it is going to be able to handle more volume of liquid. So I'm going to use a bigger jar than this one. Um, put the tea and the liquid into that other jar, strain this because this has still got tea leaves in it and I think I forgot to add the sugar to it yesterday so I need to add sugar to this as well before I can put the scoby in and let it sit on the bench to do its thing again. So that's for starting the new batch of kombucha. And there was more kombucha than would fit into this jar. So I have put some into this jar as well. And this is the one to which I've added the blueberries that you can see some are floating on the top and some have sunk down to the bottom. I really quite like making, making blueberry kombucha in a clear glass jar. The colour change is just amazing. At least that's been my experience in the past. So I will probably leave this one just plain to test what that tastes like. And this one will, of course, be flavoured with the blueberries. If you're adding fruits to your kombucha, note that it's a better idea to use a jar that has a wider lid. This one, blueberries are okay. You can still fit blueberries in and ginger if you slice up the ginger nice and small. But if you were to want to use, say, pear or something like that, then a wider mouth jar is a better way to go because you'll be able to fit your fruits in, you know, strawberries and all of those kinds of things will fit in much better. So these two will now sit on the bench for one, maybe two days, and then I'll pop them in the fridge and then I can give them a taste and I'll come back and I'll show you what they look like in a couple of days time. Here's the jar that I'm going to use to brew my next lot of kombucha in. It is larger than the other one because uh, as the scoby grows, it's able to cope with more volume of liquid I would convert it quicker into uh, kombucha. So the jar is a bit steamy at the moment because I just poured some hot water in the bottom to dissolve the sugar into because I had forgotten to add sugar to the tea mixture that I made yesterday. So now there is sugar in there. Can't add my scoby while, while this is hot. It will absolutely kill the scoby. So at the moment I'm just going to strain my tea mixture in there. Again, this is the same tea mixture that I used in the, in the last brew. So <clears throat> it's the Kombucha Camp Special Tea. So if you want to have a look at that tea, then go and have a look at the previous video. So 
so you can see that has not filled up the jar terribly much I could have potentially used a slightly smaller jar but better to err on the side of caution now I'm just going to give that a stir around and although the glass is still feeling warm there's no way that that liquid mixture is warm because that tea was stone cold so now I'm going to pour in the leftover kombucha liquid from the first batch the batch that I have just decanted off into bottles I'm going to pour that into the jar I could actually strain it because there are some goopy bits in the bottom and whilst there's nothing wrong with those goopy bits I would just prefer not to have them in there so I'm just going to strain that last little bit with a strainer and you can see that this jar has a lid but I will not be using the lid whilst it is brewing kombucha for me Brewing kombucha, you want air to be able to come into the mixture. It's not an anaerobic process, it is an aerobic process. So instead of putting the glass lid on, I will again be covering this up with a paper towel held in place with a lacquer band. So now that this is ready to go, I'm ready to introduce my SCOBY back in there. I'm so impressed with with how this scoby is looking and growing and obviously it is not the same size as this jar that I'm placing it into and you can see it just floating around loosely in there like a bit of looks a bit lost because it's so small and in fact it is just sunk down to the bottom but that's also totally fine so now I'll put the lid on this container and there it is ready to sit on my bench for uh, probably about five days before I start tasting it to see how that that's going so I guess my experiment is starting to come to a close I have indeed grown my own scoby from a professional from a So you could say that my experiment has finished because I did indeed grow my own SCOBY from a commercially purchased kombucha. I have done that. However, I have not yet tasted the kombucha that it has produced. So I'm not going to call this experiment closed until I have tasted that kombucha that I've just put into bottles earlier today. So that will be by the end of this next week so in the coming week I will taste that and let you know how that went so far I think this has done amazingly well I'm really impressed now whenever I run out of a scoby I don't have to try and find someone who's got a scoby they can give me I know that I can just go to the shop buy some kombucha and grow my own scoby that's it from me until next time